Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Okay, uh, so uh, this week, as you can see from the title page, it's a sort of English stroke British Isles kind of uh, episode of the show. And um, partly it's kind of trying to shoehorn some stuff in, I suppose. I mean, uh, obviously we've got um, the Lakes Distillery, I've got Cotswolds, and um, I've got uh, obviously the... Uh, uh, St George's Distillery in, in Norfolk samples of uh, so some of these samples kind of came along sort of um, late last year obviously the Cotswolds ones I've purchased or in actual fact I used one the the Cotswolds single malt in the uh, the January um, tasting that we did in in the shop and it went down an absolute storm which is not a surprise because I know how bloody good it is um, anyway eagle eyed members of viewers you lot out there <laughs> um, you probably noticed that on the title page there are six whiskies that I'm tasting but there are seven glasses here yeah it's a late addition shall we say that sort of came along uh, on Thursday originally as you could see from the title page I was planning to do the two bottlings uh, from the Lakes Distillery, uh, the one and the one uh, limited edition um, Sherry Expression um, and um, I, I, I was hoping to kind of do a whole episode on, on the Lakes Distillery because I'm a, a bit of a big fan, I mean I've tasted their new make and some of their earlier test batches and um, I really wanted to taste some of their own spirits to see where it was at. It's about well, I guess three, four years old, something like that. Um, and so I asked for a sample of Genesis. <laughs> oh, did I get a sample of that? Uh, no. Um, yeah, that was their first official release. And, of course, you know, I think the first bottle got auctioned off for silly money. And then they released a, a range called Quatrefoil, which is all aged in different casks and probably quite expensive, I don't know. Um, but on Thursday afternoon, the rep came in with a little sample of, of this. Uh, and this is going to be their first official sort of mainstream release and it's called um, the Whiskey Makers Reserve Chapter 1. Now, it's quite interesting really, isn't it, when you think about it, that they've started to call their whiskies chapters just at the time that the English distillery who used to call their uh, whiskies chapters have now dropped the term chapters. It's ironic, I suppose. Um, uh, but anyway, so all I know is that it's called, that's what it's called. I don't know the ABV, don't know anything else about it, apart from it's obviously got some sherry in it um, because of the colour and the fact that I know the guy that owns the distillery is into his sherry. And um, But that's about as far as I, I, I know. So anyway, look, I've got seven, <laughs> seven samples now to cram into this well, hopefully not too overlong episode of the show, so I think I'm going to shut up and I'm going to introduce today's uh, today's some um, lineup. Right, okay, so uh, I'm going to kick off with the, the Cotswold Single Malt. Uh, like I said, I've tasted this before and have been really impressed. This is batch number 04-2017, so I've um, been around for a little while. And uh, hopefully that's going to be as good as the inaugural release that I tasted not so, not so long ago. Um, then we're going to move on to the Lakes One. Uh, so this is a, a blended whiskey created by the distillery uh, as a kind of stopgap as their 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 malt was um, maturing, and it comes from all around the British Isles. And the first time I tasted it. I'm actually, this will be the third time I tasted it, but the first and second time I tasted it, I can't say I was overly enamoured by it. It had a bit of a bit of a hardness, a bit of a, hmm, we've probably used a bit of Glen Rothers in here kind of hardness. Um, but I have been assured that the uh, vatting itself has now changed and it no longer has that kind of hard character. But we shall see. Bottle of 40%. Uh, second bottling we'll be looking at is obviously the, the same juice uh, but this is the limited edition um, sherry edition um, I shall try and get your tongue around that one you've had a few uh, I believe it's bottled at 46.6 percent and it spends uh, 12 months being finished in first fill px casks and as you can see 
pretty dark colour for 12 months but so but then it is for first full px so anyway it'll be interesting to see uh what that one's like then we come on to the very special bottling and i i am kind of i must admit i'm kind of quite um uh stoked about the fact that you know they they, they wanted me to sort of taste the whiskey as soon as possible i mean you know i don't think any um advertising has gone on yet i don't even know when it's going to be released i mean i imagine relatively soon um so it's uh, i kind of feel you know and, and a big big thank you to the distillery for for getting the samples out to me and um you know uh, hopefully uh, hopefully I'll, i shall be praising it i mean as as i only got a, a dribble i haven't actually tasted it yet so we shall see um what happens there the next bottling we'll be looking at is this one this is uh from the cotswolds distillery uh this is the uh, founder's choice bottled at 60.9 percent now as you know the cotswolds um single malt is uh aged in um ex first fill kentucky with a proportion aged in ex recharred and retoasted red wine this one is all retoasted recharred ex red wine cask and you can see from the color um that it is you know pretty winey in color um so this was um uh batch number 01 2018 so um obviously the first release that they did of that particular one talking of red and winey colored <laughs> look at that one this is uh the um first of the two uh samples from the english distillery from the st george's distillery uh in their, sm their new small batch range which has replaced the um the, the old chapters so this is their 11 year old cabernet sauvignon uh matured um unpeated spirit so bottle of 46 percent uh, distilled in june of uh, 2007 and bottled in august of last year so like i said 11 years old and i believe spent the entire 11 years in a cabernet soaking yard and looking at judging by that color you would not be surprised <laughs> so um let's see if any distillery character has survived that one shall we and the last bottling uh, is again from um, the St George's Distillery. So this is the uh, English small batch, smoky American oak. Yes, that's a bit of a gobble as well, isn't it? Uh, bottled at 46%. It's eight years old. Uh, it uh, was um, peated to 63 parts per million. So that's a pretty hefty uh, phenolic count, it has to be said. Uh, distilled in July of 2010, again bottled in 2018, so like I said, eight years old, so it will be interesting to see uh, what that one's like. So anyway, that's uh, that's the light up, and um, let's uh, let's kick off with a bit of Cotswolds. Right, okay, so let's see what the nose gives us in, shall we? Young. Um, there is a, a little rose petal mar, but it's kind of sweet. It's not that sort of earthy rose petal mar. Um, there's some lovely barley notes. There's a, a touch of toasted vanilla. The, the wine notes are really quite subtle. They add a sort of a nice, slightly sweet red fruit character beneath. Um, in actual fact, it's getting a little bit more sweeter the longer it spends in the glass. But you know, it's it's not it's not unbalanced. It's really quite pleasant. And like I said, it went down an absolute storm at the um, at the last tasting I did, mainly because very few people. I don't think anybody at the tasting had ever tasted it, and they were going, Ooh, "Wow!" Um, and um, do you know what? I I really like this. It's got a little bit of, of gingery spice. Um, but a lovely softness and even though like i said this is you know not very old at all um it's it's quite lovely a character i think um so see what the power's like A little bit more wininess on the palate it kind of kicks off with the um with the red wine notes but then moves into a little bit of barley a little bit of 
of toasty American oak, um, and then starts coming back with the um, with the wine cast. There's a little bit of bitterness on the finish, a little bit of bit of tannin, um, some chocolatey spice, um, but not nothing too sort of to get bent out of shape about. It's got a lovely kind of intensity, um, slightly mouth watering on on the finish, and um, honestly. Oh. Um, cats. Um, yeah, it's dangerously drinkable. That really is lovely, it has to be said. I think, again, lovely balance, lovely progression, um, and, yeah, yeah I mean, 50-odd quid, maybe a touch expensive, possibly, but it's no more expensive than the English um, bottlings or... Um, you know, other other whiskies of uh, a similar kind of quality, although, um, like I said, it's quite young, but I, I think that's, that's pretty damn good. Right, okay, so let's move on to the revamped one then, shall we? Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this then. Quite a bit of saline, a um, little bit of peat, quite fresh, crisp. I'm noting a lack of industrial notes, so that's good. Um, some nice barley notes, touch of oak, touch of a, a, a botanical, crisp, edgy sort of um, notes as well. But you know what? I think that's all pretty nicely blended together. To be honest with you, there's um, it's it's got got some freshness, some saltiness, a little bit of peat. Um, it's, you know, all round pretty nice. I mean, I don't think it's particularly expensive, mid-30s, I would guess. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, I think they've, they've tweaked the recipe, um, or tweaked the blend, you know, really well, to be, to be fair. I think, uh, I think it's a lot better than what it used to be. So what the palace like now. Full, quite chewy, soft, pleasantly barley, malty, bit of peat kind of coming through on the finish. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not the most complex of blends that I've ever tasted, but um, it delivers nicely and it's got enough interest to sort of go, mm, yeah, okay, that's, that's pleasant. Um, it's got a bit of progression, like I said, it kind of opens up with the barley and, and then moves into the oak and then you get a little bit of peat on the finish um, so I think for, for your money I mean that is that's that's impressive that's pretty good I think and considering and I suppose the reason why I'm heaping so much praise upon it is because I remember what it was like and what it and that wasn't really that great to be fair um, so this really has improved amazingly um, so yeah Okay, so let's move on to the um, sherry uh, edition. So, like I said, 12 months in XPX cask. Let's see what those good sense, shall we? Pretty balanced, actually. Yes, there's there's obvious noticeable sherry notes. Um, slightly treacly, slightly sort of whiny. Um, quite herbal but again I'm getting a touch of barley I'm getting a little bit of, of vanilla oak um, again fairly soft easy going um, I'm guessing probably a little bit more expensive than the um, the standard the one but then this is bottled at a slightly higher ABV as well um, and it certainly has that little bit more intensity and it's quite interesting um, how just that little bit extra alcohol um, really does kind of ramp up the intensity and, and although I think there's nothing wrong with the, the one at 40% um, and it, there are some bottlings I've tasted at 40% that you know come across really quite watery and it's not just because I'm kind of used to tasting 
um, high strength um, whiskies, sometimes just 40% really doesn't cut it. Um, but anyway, in, th in this instance, I think, I think yeah, it's got a got a nice intensity. It's got uh, got a good balance as well, and it's not not overly sherried. Let's see what the parts like. Juicy, unctuous, lovely intensity. Um, kicks off with the American oak, lots of toffee, coffee. Then the sherry starts to move in, and a little bit of prunes, dried fruit, treacle, and that kind of treacly note kind of lingers throughout throughout it. Um, it's a, a, a smidgen of smoke, maybe not quite so much uh, sort of saltiness as the uh, um, the one. Um, but again, it's got a, a lovely intensity on the finish and a really good balance. Progression, which I often keep banging on and on about. Um, it's like I don't really want the whiskey to just go boof on the palate and just deliver everything in one go. I'd like it to unwind and sort of take me on a bit of a journey, should we say, to use some god-awful marketing talk. But, um, you know, um, for a sherried whiskey, I really quite enjoyed that. I think that's actually really nice. Right, okay, so first unveiling of chapter one of the uh, Lakes Distillery uh, Whiskey Makers Reserve. Let's uh, see what the notes gives us on this. Dusty, slightly cinnamon flecked um, tannins, edgy, um, obvious sherry notes. Um, Quite malty. There's a bit of barley. I think it's got a. I think it's got a nice balance again. Um, it's certainly got a sort of a, a tautness to it. Um, I'm kind of guessing, given that sort of tautness on the nose. Um, I mean, it's not overtly alcoholic, but it's sort of. It's leading me into sort of like um, forty. Probably closer to 50%, I would have thought. Um, there's, a, there's a touch of earth, some roasted coffee. But again, I'm getting a little bit of barley. I'm getting the sort of the softness that I expected from the uh, the lake spirit. And I don't think it's unbalanced. I mean, I mean I'm guessing possibly if this is a vatting... I would have said sort of 60-40 sherry to American oak. Um, I mean, it's possible this is finished. Um, it may well be, um, but I, I get the impression it's a vatting. I don't know. Again, this is it's always the thing with whiskey. You're kind of like thinking, well, is it this? Is it that? You know, it's like, and when you're doing things completely blind, you know, you can be... Um, your nose can often lead you up sort of like, you know, certain pathways. Um, and you start to go, well, yeah, right, definitely, I'm sort of certain about that, right, I'm following that, you know. Um, but no, I mean, uh, this is going to retail for about sort of 60 quid, um, which, to be fair, is about right for th this kind of level of whiskey. Um, and I don't think that's overpriced. It's very clean. I mean, that is the key point. All of these so far have been really clean. No sulfur blemishes, you know, good cask selection, um, which I think is key when you are playing around with sherry. Anyway, let's see what the parts are, shall we? A lot more treacly, slightly charry, coffee sherry on the palate. Um, spices, cinnamon, a little bit of, of orange conserve. Um, sweet ginger as well. A little bit of barley as well. Again, the alcohol is fairly noticeable, which is kind of leading me into that kind of thought that it is bottled at around about 50%. I don't think this is full cask strength. It doesn't quite have that intensity, but I wouldn't be surprised if this was sort of like around about the 50% mark. Um, 
it's certainly got that lovely intensity, lovely herbal finish. A um, little bit of biscuitiness on, on, on the finish as well. I mean, I'm guessing that might be sort of like, you know, um, burnt wort on the inside of the stills, giving it a slight biscuity note. Um, but, you know what, I really like that. Again, I think that it's not over-sherried. It's not just all Oloroso or PX or, or, or what have you. It has some balance. It has some nuances of, uh, of the um, softness of the distillery character and a bit of barley. I mean, yes, I think the sherry is probably the most obvious um, component, but again, it does have some balance. And I think sort of, you know, again, for another sherried whiskey, I'm praising it. Oh, my word. Okay, so let's move on to a bit of thumping wine stuff then, shall we? Um, so, right, this is the Cotswolds Founders Choice, uh, all aged in uh, um, recharred and retoasted wine casks. Let's see whether those give us. Very whiny. Um, lots of almost manure intense um, red fruits, uh, coffee. Bit of rose petal mar, intense, young, sweet red fruit. I, again, to me, I'm not hugely warming to this. It has to be said. It does. It kind of lacks the balance of the single malt um, because of all this wine cask, and it's very over. It's very in your face. Um, and there isn't really an awful lot of anything else going on, to be fair. And, 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 and I, it, fe it seems to feel a lot younger than the, um, than the single malt. I mean, and, I mean, there can't be very much difference between the two in terms of age, a few months maybe, but it certainly feels a lot younger and maybe that's the, the sort of the, the, the lesser interaction between the spirit and the, the, the wine cask. Um, I mean, certainly, obviously, the wine cask, I would guess, will be a, a European oak, slightly tighter grain than the American oak, less wood interaction, um, and hence why you end up with a sort of a, a younger feeling uh, end product. But in saying that, the quality is pretty damn good. As we said, no off notes, nothing like that at all. Um, but just like I said, it's just, for me, a little bit sort of unbalanced in the fact that it's obviously more about the wine cast than the actual spirit. A little bit of almost gooseberry kind of note coming out now, which is a bit weird. Um, I hadn't expected that. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what the power's like. Quite soft, quite creamy. Considering this is about this is sixty odd percent, it's bloody easy to drink at this ABV. It has to be said. I'm not getting any harsh alcohol. It's all really well contained. Um, Mouth watering finish, really juicy. Loads of red fruit, loads of wine. No distillery character, no barley, yada yada yada. But if you like this kind of thing, then you're gonna love it. I mean, it's clean, it's fresh. Um, it's intense. I'm getting a little bit now on the aftertaste of, the, of, 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 of some vanilla, um, some oak vanillins, but you know, again, like I said, this is all about the wine cask, and um, I mean, like I said, quality, you really can't argue with it. I mean, it's very, very impressive, and, and, and I think so far, you know, the Cotswolds and, and certainly the Lake Distillery are doing everything, you know, that you the right way, just how you would expect new distilleries to, to be doing it. There's no, no, no mucking about here, you know, they, they, they've obviously you know, invested lots of money in these enterprises and so they're not going to be mucking about, you know, they're going to produce a quality product and, you know, it's all about, like with every whiskey, it's whether that kind of floats your boat or not and this doesn't quite float my boat, 
Dat is het. Ik kijk. Oeh. 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 Right, okay, so let's move on to um, the uh, English whiskey uh, Cabernet Sauvignon glass. Let's see what the news gives us on this then, shall we? Again, pretty intense, quite whiny, um, quite herbal in actual fact. Sort of lots of, um, sort of almost gristy notes, which is quite a surprise given that it's 11 years old. Um, but again, there's not really much in the way of distillery character. Well, there isn't any distillery character, to be fair. Um, it's all about the wine cask. And um, there's a touch of spice. A little bit of citrus, maybe. But, you know, it's just wine cask. And that's about it, it has to be said. Um, again, very clean. A little bit of vanilla. But ultimately, it's kind of like the Cotswold bottling. It's a... A bit unbalanced, it has to be said. Let's see what the power gives us. Quite sweet, quite jammy. Um, again, slightly gingery sort of like red black fruits bit of alcohol uh, tannin again no real sort of distillery character quite a spicy finish um, slightly mouth watering uh, and I can see why it was done it was you know an experiment I mean certainly it's not bad whiskey um, but it's just kind of could be from anywhere really and that's that is the point with both of these particular bottlings there's it's all about the cask there's no sort of feeling of of, of, of anything other than the cask with the cask itself and they could literally come from anywhere um, and that is always the argument i had with with cask matured whiskies and sherry big sherry monsters and all that kind of stuff is uh, they have no light and shade you know um Whereas some, you know, some of the others, the finishes and things like that, do tend to have a bit of balance. And certainly, you know, I mean, this is not a bad whiskey at all, but it's just, just sort of, yeah, you know, not really floating my boat. Right, okay, and let's move on to the final whiskey of this afternoon. This is the... Uh, Eight-year-old small batch smoky. So let's see what the nose gives us. Oh yes, that's peaty. Um, lots of phenolic peat, tar, brine, sweet barley. Um, slight violety note. Um, touch of of herbal notes um, it's got a sort of kind of Kalila meets Ardbeggy kind of character it's got that or yeah old school sort of Kalila got that freshness that citric crispness but it's got a slight woodiness as well that you would associate with Ardbeg um, again there's no real distillery character and this is the big issue I have with with their peated malt I mean it's it's kind of it serves a purpose I mean people like big thumping peated whiskies um, but I suppose with um, distilleries like Ardbeg and Kalila and, and Laphroaig and, and what have you you know it's part of their DNA part of their makeup with distilleries like the St George's distillery you taste their unpeated malt and it's gorgeous it, it just it has that sort of lowlandy sort of softness that sort of you know uh, and to be honest with you i guess the peat then becomes kind of like the focal point and you know that the spirit is really quite different and you know uh, i can see why it's done and the quality is impressive and if you love peated whiskies it's 
it's really, really impressive. It is for a Pete, you know, full stop. Um, but for me, again, it kind of, it's like a lot of these, you know, established Scottish distilleries that go into making a peat in malt. They just sort of I think, right, yeah, peat the damn malt as high as possible because that's what we want, you know. And it completely loses the point. You know, you start off with, with all right, maybe thinking I'll do a peat at Speyside, we'll do a little bit of peat, maybe 10, 11 parts per million, subtle smoke, nice balance, and then up goes the peating level. We're up to about sort of 30, 40, 50 parts per million. No real character and no sort of nuance. It's all about the peat. And, you know, and, and I've said that to several distilleries that have done that. I said, well, why? Why have you done this? It's just, it goes against the grain of what you were attempting to achieve at the very beginning. Uh, you know, a peated spay or peated sort of softly peated whiskey just to nuance um, but anyway, hang on, I'm getting carried away. Um, I've had too much whiskey and I'm getting on my soapbox. Um, as, as a standalone whiskey, I really like this. I love peated whiskies, you, you know that. Um, and this has got a lot of it. <laughs> Let's see what the power's like. After saying all that, actually, the palate's got a lot better balance. Kind of opens up with some sweet barley. Um, the peat isn't quite so in your face. It certainly comes through on the middle palate and the finish. Um, and you certainly get that kind of lovely, kind of soft, um, barleyed, slightly honeyed character of the spirit. Um, so in this, this instance, it actually works better on the palate um, than it does on the nose. Um, quite herbal, quite intense, really long, very, very long, really lingers. I'm getting loads of peat still on um, herbal-y kind of peat on the finish. Um, and it's kind of less kind of hard beggy and more kind of sort of like old school Kalila with that freshness, a little bit of saltiness as well. Um, and I'd quite happily drink that if I wanted a peated malt. I'd I, I wouldn't think twice about drinking that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But like I said, <coughs> I think I'm always going to prefer that unpeated uh, whiskey. But um, anyway, uh, I think um, I think that's yeah, not too shabby, as they say. Right. Okay. So uh, let's wrap today's episode of the show up. Right. Well. Obviously, um, firstly, a big, big thank you to the Lakes Distillery for the samples and to the St. George's Distillery for the samples of uh, the, the, the English whiskey. I yeah, always kind of um, appreciate the support that you guys kind of give. So, uh, you know, it's, that's that's really, really nice. Um, no thanks to the Cotswolds. No, no, seriously, honestly. I mean, yes, all right. I kind of, what? bought one bottle and obviously nabbed a sample of the other um, but it was mainly just to basically you know to, to, to kind of complete the, the the episode I suppose uh, but no I, I honestly um, the Cotswolds distillery have been really generous in the past with samples and, and stuff like that so again I've got you know a big thank you to them for their for their support over, over the years and uh, yes guys i have got it on the shelves well at least i've got the the single malt on the shelf so um a quick um surmising of uh, this episode the cotswold single malt absolutely fantastic love it like i said you know bottle it when it's ready which i think i said in the last show um and um yeah that that that's just absolutely gorgeous really really nice and if you've not tasted it I really suggest you do. Um, the one um, light years beyond what it was. I mean, it really is kind of chalk and cheese. I mean, you know, obviously the change in in the, in um, the raw materials for this vatting has, has certainly worked. It is doesn't have that kind of harsh industrial kind of character. Um, it's now a lot softer. Um, and a lot more interesting in my personal opinion. Um, the um, uh, Sherry edition, 
Yeah, I like that. I mean, I don't dislike Sherry. I mean, people think I do dislike Sherry, but I just dislike Sherry monsters. Um, I, I, I think it had balance, and I certainly have got no problem with stocking that, and I think if you're after a, you know, a nice a blended whiskey, then you know that certainly fits the bill. Um, their first uh, whiskey makers release. I really want you guys to bottle something in American oak. I know you're not going to do it because I know you're into your sherry, but I would love to see it, in, it, it aged in American oak. I would love to see the full character of the distillery uh, with a bit of sort of, yeah, because it's got a lovely softness, a lovely kind of character. I mean, I know from tasting the advanced samples what the character of the of the distillery is like, and you know, part of me just goes, no, please, please don't blanket it in sherry. And I will give them their dues. They have not blanketed in sherry. It is got a kind of a sherry um, focus, but certainly it's not kind of like, you know, overwhelmed. It's not a monster. There is a bit of balance there. And, and again, I think I would have no issue with um, selling that or uh, or stocking it. Um, the um, Cotswolds uh, Founders Choice yeah okay uh, it's not floating my boat it's all about the wine cask and you can say exactly the same about the um, English distilleries Cabernet Sauvignon it's unbalanced it's whiny there's no real other character other than the wine cask all right interesting experiment yeah, yeah it, may, it may well do it for you but for me you know I would rather sort of the, the standard Cotswolds bottling or like I said I would you know the uh, the the um, unpeated um, American oak aged uh, English whiskey and to, to be fair I suppose you can probably say, I can say the same about the peated malt again nothing wrong with it really very very good quality and if you want something with a bit of intense peat but you don't want the usual suspects then well yeah that fits the bill entirely but I just keep coming back to the fact that I love the characteristic of their unpeated stick it in American oak no frills just you know Distillery character, bit of vanilla, yeah, I just, you just can't go wrong with that, and that, but that's me, you know, you know, um, <laughs> that's, that's that's my fetish, shall we say? But you know, uh, all of these whiskies that I think I've tasted today, you really, really cannot argue with the quality, and um, I, I I wish them all well. I mean, obviously the the St George's Distillery has now been going for well over ten years, so. Um, really established the other two distilleries you know obviously just starting out on that kind of journey and i really wish them all the best and and hope that um you know that, that, that they you know have the same meowing apparently um yeah it's pretty cat um anyway so um that's this this week's episode in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you know, we're, we're starting on a, another journey towards yet another 100 episodes of the show. So uh, until next time, good afternoon and good running. Mmm, mmm.